Hey everyone, I'm Isabel from the Cognito Forms team, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to share forms and entries with people outside your organization using guest access. So before I jump into the tutorial, I'll briefly describe each of the scenarios that we're going to look at, so you can just skip ahead to the chapter that interests you. And if you're not familiar with YouTube chapters, you'll find them marked in the description of this video. So as you may be aware, there are two types of guest users those that have been added to a guest list and those that have been sent an authenticated link. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to share forms and entries with both types of guests. We'll first look at users that have been added to a guest list. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how to allow these users to log onto a portal and regularly submit forms. Maybe something like a timesheet or an expense report or any other form that is submitted on a recurring basis. After we set this up, I'm gonna show you how to allow these users to view their past submissions. One thing to note is that if you only want a guest to submit a form one time, you might wanna think about setting that up as a task. And if you need a tutorial for that, you'll find it in the assigning task section of the guest access support content. In the second scenario, I'll show you how to let guests log into a guest portal without adding them to a guest list. So guests who aren't on a guest list can still log in and access shared entries as long as they have at least one authenticated save and resume or workflow link and a public role view available for them for that form. So if you're only interested in that scenario, you can just skip ahead to the chapter called log in without a guest list. All right, so let's look at how to set up scenario number one letting guests from a guest list log in to set up forms. This process is pretty simple. It'll involve adding a field to your form, adjusting some workflow settings, and creating an entry view for your guest user. To begin, locate the form you want your guest user to access and go to the build page. For this demonstration, I'll be using an order form. Once you're on the build page, the first thing you'll want to do is add a person field to your form. You can put it anywhere, but I recommend putting it right at the top just so it's easy to find. I'll name this field customer and configure it to look up people from the appropriate guest list. You'll notice that the person field we just added is set to default to the current user. You'll wanna keep this setting as it is, but also set it to read only always. This is the simplest way to make sure that the form accurately records who the guest user is and that those details can never be changed. Next, uncheck this box so your customer's name automatically fills your person field. If you leave it checked, their data won't come through and the field will stay empty. Since you set it to default to the current user and made it read only, guests won't be able to open the dropdown or see other guests' names. Now that your form is set up properly, you can go to the workflow tab and adjust your settings. First, you'll need to assign the public role to your guest. To do that, open the roles section and click on the public role. Then open the dropdown under the share with section. You'll find your customer's person field there. Then click save. The last thing you'll need to do is require authentication for public links. To do that, just scroll down a bit in the workflow settings and open up the public links section. By default, public links are always turned on. So from here, you'll just need to set require authentication to guests and users. If you don't adjust this setting, your public form will not show up on your guest portal. Currently, with the way the form is set up, any user can access the public link as long as they verified their identity. This can be a great option if you want to make your form widely available while still using guest access to track who is accessing it. However, you may prefer to restrict access to specific people only. For example, only those with an active status on your guest list. To do this, you'll need to adjust when public links are allowed. In this case, I'll set allow links when customer.active is yes. I also suggest adding a note for users who are not able to access your form. Now, only active users on your guest list will be able to access the public link, and when they're not an authorized user, they'll see an appropriate message letting them know. That's all we need to do on the build page, but we still need to set up an entry view on the entries page. So save your form and head over to the entries page. 
At this stage, you'll want to set up an entry view that allows your guests to access and submit forms anytime they log in. So begin by clicking the green plus icon in the middle of the screen. From here, you'll choose New Form View. For the view name, remember that this is the label that your guest user will see on their portal's homepage. So you'll want to choose something clear and descriptive so your guest immediately understands what the page is for. In this example, I'll name it Submit New Order. When you're setting up an entry view for your guest, you will always choose the public role. Then save and your guest will be able to log in and view the public form and submit it whenever they need to. Now you might also want to create a view where your guests can see all of their previous submissions. To do this, we'll create another view, except this time we'll pick New Grid View. In this example, I'll create a view so that the guest can see all of their past orders. Remember, the title will appear on your guest portal, so choose something that makes the purpose clear, for example, order history. And then change the role to public. And turn off allow new entries. Once you save that, your guest will be able to see all of their past orders in this view. If you wanted to create a more specific view, for example, only orders that are currently in progress, you could go to the filter and then choose only that status. In this case, I'm not applying any filters because I want the guest to be able to see all of their orders, regardless of status. In the next portion of the video, I'll show you how to let users log into a portal without being on a guest list. If you're not planning to use a dedicated guest list, you'll need to send your guest an authenticated link for one or more entries. An authenticated link is a secure, unique URL that allows a specific user to access and work with a particular entry after verifying their identity. In this demonstration, I'll give you a quick example of sending an authenticated workflow link and then show you how to create an entry view so your guests can have a portal experience without needing a guest list. If you want a deeper dive into authenticated links, I do recommend watching the video titled Adding Guests to Your Organization. I go over some pretty useful scenarios in that video, so if you're interested, the section on authenticated links begins at the 6 minute and 30 second mark. For this scenario, let's suppose you have a publicly available order form which doesn't require authentication, meaning that anyone can view it without verifying their identity. But once someone submits the order form, they can log into their portal and view their entire order history. In this process, we'll just need to add one field to the order form, adjust the workflow settings, and then create a public view for the entries page. To set this up, we'll begin by going to the build page of our order form. First, you'll want to add your customer's email to the form. Then you'll want to go to your workflow tab to assign the public role. In this case, you'll want the public role to be assigned to the customer's email, which you just added to your form. Once you save the role, scroll down to view the workflow link sharing settings. You'll want to turn this on and then set require authentication to always. Now you'll need to set up email notifications that send your authenticated workflow links. In this case, I'll set it up to automatically send an email when the user hits the Submit Order button. To do this, I'll click the Submit Order button and then open the email notification template. You'll need to include your customer's email from the form, and then you'll want to click Share Workflow Link. You'll choose Public because guests can only be in the public role. This workflow link will appear as a button inside your email. You can easily update the button text right here if you'd like. I also recommend customizing both the subject line and the body of the email so it feels clear and relevant to your customer. While I kept this demo form pretty simple to highlight the key parts, a real order form would typically include a name field, something you could also insert to personalize the message. Here's an example of how this email template would look when your customer receives it. Once you're finished editing your email template, save it, then save your form, and then go to the Entries page. Now you'll want to set up an entry view so your guests can see all the entries shared with them. Begin by clicking the New View button and then choosing New Grid View. 
Since your guests will see this label on their portal, it's helpful to give adequate context in the view name. For example, I'll name it View Order History. Then assign the role to public and turn off Allow New Entries. In this scenario, it actually doesn't matter whether the Allow New Entry setting is turned on or off. These guests will only see the entries shared with them through the authenticated links they've received. Once you save your entry view, your guest will be able to see their order history without being on a guest list. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with guest access, and I wasn't able to cover every scenario in this short video. So if you're not sure how to set up your specific use case, you can always check our user guides, which we regularly update. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our team by submitting a support request.